In this video, let's take a look at conditional validation. At times, you might want dynamic validation, meaning a particular validation should be applied only under certain conditions. We can easily do that in reactive forms. Let's take a look at an example. In the HTML, I'm going to add an email input field and also a checkbox to subscribe to promotional offers. So let me quickly copy paste the HTML. Right below username, I'm going to paste email and a checkbox to send promotional offers. Next, let's add the two form controls in the form model. Email, no default value and subscribe with a default value of false. If we take a look at the browser, we can see the two form controls, email and send me promotional offers. Now what we want to achieve is conditional validation. If the user checks the checkbox, the email field should be a required field. If the checkbox is unchecked, the email field is not a required field. So the validation is conditionally applied based on the value of the checkbox. To track the value of the checkbox, we can make use of the value changes property. Every form control provides its current value as an observable through the value changes property. We subscribe to the observable and conditionally apply the validation based on the form control value. Now we want to subscribe in the ng on init lifecycle hook. So app component implements on init, make sure to import it. And then let's define the ng on init method. I'm also going to move the form model code within the ng on init method. We get a couple of red squigglies, so let's fix them. First, declare registration form of type form group. Next, in ng on init, we are going to make this this dot registration form. That is going to be equal to a new form group. Now you can see that we don't have any errors anymore. Okay, so now let's get back to value changes property. So in the ng on init method, first let's get a hold of the subscribe checkbox. So this dot registration form dot get the form control is subscribe. Then we access the value changes property. This returns an observable. So let's subscribe to it. Once we have subscribed, when the value changes, we get the checked value as a parameter. In the arrow function body, let's first get a hold of the email form control. So const email is equal to this dot registration form dot get email. Next, if the value is checked, so if checked value, we need to set the required validator. And for that, we make use of the set validators method on the form control. So email dot set validators, validators dot required. If the value is not checked, we clear the validators using the clear validators method. So email dot clear validators. Finally, we need to call the update value and validity method to ensure the correct status is reflected. So email dot update value and validity. Now that we are conditionally applying the validation, let's provide visual feedback and display the appropriate error message. I'm going to create a getter for the email control just like the username control. So this is going to be get email. 
which is going to get us the email field from registration form. Now in the HTML, let's add the code. Now this is something we have already seen a couple of times now, so let me copy paste the code. So on the email input field, class dot is invalid if email is invalid and email is touched. And right below that, we are going to add an error message. So small tag class of text danger binding to d hyphen none if email is valid or email is untouched and the message email is required. So email here refers to our getter email. And I have made a small mistake. This should be username. And this should be email. So this email getter is being used in the HTML. Now, if you go back to the browser, on page load, you can see that there is no error message displayed. I can click inside the email control and then click away and still no validation. If I click on the checkbox though, the validation kicks in. Enter a value and the message is gone. Let's repeat this. Page load, no error message. Select the checkbox, still no error message because we haven't touched the email control. Click inside and navigate away, you get the error message. Type something in and the error message is gone. So that is how you conditionally apply validation rules to the form controls in reactive forms. The important property and methods are value changes, set validators, clear validators, and update value and validity. All right, that is about conditional validation in reactive forms. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.